Here's where we left off. We were talking about the chemical synapse and we were explaining how graded potentials work. So one of the things that we did early is we made that chart, really understanding that chart where like the axon has got action potentials, which is why it's only at the axon that we find voltage gated channels Make sure you know that stuff, okay? That's kind of a summary. But we were talking about this. We were talking about how when an action potential, when it arrives here at the axon terminus, and this is the synaptic bulb, uh, then it will cause these little uh, packages of neurotransmitter molecules, neurotransmitters, to be exocytosed, to be spit out into this space in what's called the synapse. Now, the way this is drawn, it looks like these little molecules could whoop, go floating away. They can't. They're trapped in a space called the synaptic cleft. The more frequently an action potential arrives here, the more of these neurotransmitters will build up in this space. And the more neurotransmitters there are, the more of these ligand gated channels will end up getting opened, <clears throat> okay? So a neurotransmitter binds to a ligand gated channel that causes it to open. The more frequent the action potentials, the more exocytosis, the more exocytosis, the more neurotransmitters build up out here, the more neurotransmitters there are, the more of these channels get opened up, and the more of those channels that get opened up, the more of whatever that ion is, is allowed to enter the cell. A good example of a neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter, this little guy, that would act between a nerve cell and a muscle cell. But um, oxytocin is a neurotransmitter, serotonin is a neurotransmitter. And you might say, wait a minute, Tidal, isn't oxytocin and serotonin, aren't those hormones? Well, yes, they are, because we don't name something a hormone or a neurotransmitter because of the type of molecule it is. We name it by how it's being used. And if a cell spits it out, but it goes in the bloodstream, hormone. If a cell spits it out, goes into a synapse, neurotransmitter. <clears throat> right. Now, you, you may wonder how the signal ever stops. Uh, that's a good question, and we will cover it when we get to the neuromuscular junction. All right. In the meantime, we're talking about graded potentials. And graded potentials, I have told you, are different from action potentials in a number of ways. One way is action potentials use voltage-gated channels. Graded potentials use ligand-gated cha channels. Because voltage-gated channels open each other, then action potentials either happen or they don't. But ligand gated channels don't open each other, right? Just because this uh, uh, channel is open, that in no way will open up the adjacent channel. And that is why action potentials are all or none, but graded potentials, they can be small. They're small, graded potentials will be small if just a few of these uh, if just a few of these doors, sorry, a graded potential will be small if just a few ligand gated channels open. And if just a few ligand gated channels open, they'll let a little bit of ions go into the cell. Then you've got a small action potential. You've changed the electricity across the membrane by letting some ions through. But if you only opened a few ligand gated channels, you didn't change it by much. So that would be a small action potential. I'm sorry, a small graded potential. When lots of action potentials arrive and they release a lot of neurotransmitter, then they will open a lot of these channels. When a lot of channels are open, then a lot of the ions go into the cell. And when a lot of ions go into the cell, it changes the electricity across the cell by a lot and you get a big graded potential, okay? You also can get positive graded potentials and negative graded potentials. Let me, let me try to draw that, okay? Wrong thing, there, okay. So here is going to be time. And in red, 
I am going to have it so that what we have is an action potential. And with an action potential, it'll suddenly go, woo, and it'll be very big, and it'll happen suddenly, and it'll stop. That's what an action potential might look like. Let's do a graded potential. A graded potential, let's do a small one. Ooh, that's a small graded potential, right? If we had a big graded potential, it, sorry, if we had a big graded potential, it might look like that, right? And it led to an action potential. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? But it's also possible to have graded potentials that are negative. It's possible to have graded potentials that do that, okay? Well, why is it that an action potential is always in this positive direction? By the way, moving in the positive direction is called depolarizing, depolarizing the neuron. When, when an event like a, opening a voltage-gated channel causes the inside to be more positive, that is called depolarizing the membrane. Action potentials always depolarize the membrane. Um, why? Because action potentials open up voltage-gated sodium channels, and voltage-gated sodium channels let sodium into the cell, and sodium is positive, so the inside of the cell becomes more positive, and you depolarize the membrane. Now, graded potentials, graded potentials, they can be positive, and if they're positive, they depolarize the membrane, and it will be because their little channel lets sodium into the cell, right? But graded potentials can also hyperpolarize the membrane, hyperpolarize it. And how would they hyperpolarize it? Well, let me erase all this stuff. They would hyperpolarize it if the ion that they let into it was negatively charged, right? If you let positively charged sodium into the cell, you're gonna depolarize the membrane. But what if you let chloride come into the cell? There are both some ligand-gated channels at the synapses on the dendrites and cell body that when they open, they don't allow sodium in, they allow chloride in. And chloride has a negative charge. And so when chloride comes in, it will hyperpolarize, hyperpolar, why do I do that? Hyperpolarize the cell, okay? So graded potentials, they get added up. When they are excitatory, they are called EPSPs, which stands for excitatory postsynaptic potentials. Whenever it's going, going, upward, whenever it's letting positively charged ions in, it is depolarizing the membrane. That's what I, that's what I just said, just in a different way. And when I depolarize the membrane, how am I doing that? I'm letting positively charged stuff in. And when positively charged stuff comes in, then I am making the inside more positive and that's depolarizing the membrane. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, those are called excitatory postsynaptic potentials, and I'll show you why in a moment. But the E stands for excitatory, and that means we're making that nerve cell excited about having its own action potential. We're heading back towards action potentials now. However, neurotransmitters can also be inhibitory. The, in, the neurotransmitter will be considered inhibitory if it opens up a ligand-gated chloride channel. Chloride is negatively charged, so opening up ligand-gated chloride channels will make the inside even more negative, and that is called hyperpolarizing the membrane. So graded potentials can be positive or negative. They can be big or small. They're big if they open up a lot of ligand-gated channels. And how will they open up a lot of ligand-gated channels if there's a lot of neurotransmitter in the synapse? And why would be there, there be a lot of neurotransmitter? It's because the sending cell sent frequent action potentials, okay? They will be positive or depolarize the membrane if they let sodium in the cell. They'll be negative or hyperpolarize the membrane if they let chloride in the cell. If they let sodium into the cell, then we will get 
closer to what is called threshold, right? We'll get those closer to the threshold. So these excitatory postsynaptic potentials are trying to excite that receiving nerve cell into sending out its own action potentials. Inhibitory will make it less likely to send out its own action potentials. So neurotransmitters, they can cause EPSPs when they open a ligand-gated channel that allows sodium into the cell, or they can cause IPSPs. That's when they open up ligand-gated channels that let chloride into the cell, okay? But threshold, I don't know if we've done threshold yet. Well, if we don't, I'll find a way to do it. Okay, which of the following statements about ligand-gated channels is false? Ligand-gated channels are found in dendrites. That's true. That's true. Because remember, ligand-gated channels are where neurotransmitters will be received. And technically, that is how a neuron receives information from a sending cell. And ligand-gated channels are also found in the cell bodies. That is also true. Okay. So can they initiate IPSPs? I just told you they could. IPSPs or EPSPs. Either one, okay? Can they depolarize the cell membrane? Yes, EPSBs depolarize the cell membrane. IPSBs hyperpolarize the cell membrane. So that is true. They're membrane proteins, yeah. They're proteins that sit in the cell membrane. That's how they do their job. So the answer is, da da da, none of the above are false. Or if this was a choose all that apply, you better choose them all. Well, all except for six. None of the above are false. All right, we are going to get to the topic of threshold on the next video.